didn't send that one. Yeah. Thanks, Wade. I'll, I'll take it back. That's right. Yo, Alex, can I get a highlight? Yeah. Oh, Alpha, god damn it. Oh, uh, we have our bill. We have the bill. Bad of it. <laughs> it wasn't even me, it was Alpha. <laughs> I think it's a good place to put it. The table is just not, not very stable. You're not stable. Uh, it's not stable. <laughs> no, you just keep. Like I'm not. Uh, I'm saying it's better right now. Here, let's hold it back here. Are you part of the round? I'm moderating. Just hold it back. No, I just wanted to set up. He's delivering the uh, 3NR and the 3NR. <laughs> Didn't pocket There's something else people are using. Speech drop. Yeah. Speech drop. Speech drop. Speech drop. No, now it redirects like a virus website. Did I just check? I actually bought them. <laughs> Rom's finishing up. Um, my name's Eric. I introduced myself yesterday, but I'll be moderating this debate. So between speeches and prep time, well, prep time might run a little long. We'll kind of discuss what's happening. Uh, some advice before we dive into it, though. Obviously, you should all flow. But in addition to that, I really recommend when you're watching practice rounds to, or any rounds for that matter, 
to flow actively, instead of just being like an observer to the round, imagine yourself in each of the debater's shoes. So before or after the one in C, you should be thinking, what's the one AR about to go for? What would it make sense to go for? What are their different options? And what are the like strategic trade-offs of those different options? So don't just wait for it to happen and observe. Be really active in thinking about like, what would you do if you were them? Um, and in particular for our lab, that's what we will be talking about after this. You will each be redoing uh, different speeches from the round and seeing different versions of how this round could have played out. Another thing is, you know, I think it's a huge learning experience to be a judge because you suddenly realize like, well, he's close to base. If you're not a judge, you don't have to actually decide that. But each of you should imagine that you're a judge to this debate. And again, for our lab, you'll be giving an RFD after this and you'll be presenting it to the whole lab. So think, how would I explain, how would I resolve these close debates? Like, you know, both sides make, I imagine this will be a good debate where it won't just be like one side crushes the other. Given that, how are you gonna ju justify your decision with some of these close calls? When both sides are making good defensive arguments, good weighing, how do you resolve those decisions? And that insight should help you in your rounds to realize how do I like push the needle towards myself in those close situations. Um, yeah, any questions or any anything before we dive in? All right, we'll give Ram a little bit of time to wrap up the speech deck, and then yeah, just be ready to flow in a moment. I see it. Um, one thing, so I'm not reading every card in the packet because it's 
long. Um, I don't expect, I expect a few other people to be capable of finishing the entire packet. It's, it's a lot of cards and there's, so when you debate, feel free to take, you know, the one of the two solvency cards or one of the two internal link cards instead of reading all of them and then not finishing the other finish. Maximizing net well being two warrants, all experiences are subjective. We must fix first determine subjective experience before looking to other moral questions and to accept requests for not only introspective, instead of all way of for not only introspective, it's revival way of knowing yourself and pleasures, good dispersion, but not only expected not to be produced within the world outside subjective experience, the only gem is these are properties and relations with one subjective experience. Phenomenal introspection is the basis of determining subjective experiences, logically leads us to a hedonistic moral system, Neil's and above. Eight, when I consider increasing pleasure, just these right over brighter and black is replaced with the yellow and visible field here. What things are better if there's no more pleasure, worse is, but worse is there, the worse as there is more pain pleasure, it's part of our subjective, uh, subjective experience. The, just experience looking into orange brightness is common. common. There is experience that have good feelings of common. The inertia pleasure is nothing more than, a, so, than that sort of felt goodness. Third, no or no activation distinction for states since their implicit approvals of actions still entail moral responsibility. Since you finally uh, governs always and, uh, and always and necessarily fits charge of being policy regulated. Third, government creates permission prohibition to not and refusing to act distinction between authorized and not authorized. Private action becomes reserved with the government formally or, or formally for 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 this private action. Fourth, moral uncertainty means we should prevent extinction of possible trouble or certainty. Should be present understanding that axiology must be continued. We now know what we be able to imagine. But the best sense there is a great value for serving a really recognized. Uh, you know, value ensure the future or permanently to ensure that they will be future that's what you can the future will contain value advantage what is inequality compared to data proves you didn't solve inequality curve for the we present new evidence units way to reduce wage equality you're the path reject if you reason to include the whole organization to review so you can reduce this wage equality you're going to motivate the fact that the trends between countries and the future rate from heaven government unionization collective bargaining to hit carbon the suitable for estimating how units have affected wage equality wage equality is also always forever the union works and our union works the precipitate quality of the unionization will be written up to two thirds of the difference in the in the trend unions are necessary and sufficient to address existing inequality of certainty the unions have played a pivotal role in building strong consumer base necessary for virtually the very good union street the nation grows reasonable distribution of the country's both resistance. Fear of policy of the base reality unionized the agency of the past and last century. The labor cost of producers not be very good for a common provision of employers are supporting the wealthy from a higher percentage of wage employees which go far to reject the cost of trend economic policy, the paucity of, uh, the paucity of consumer spending. Inequality drastically undermines American stock market. Campbell 14, the, the, uh, or Campbell 14, the, the U.S. has helped create an underwrite global opportunity. We acquired decisions. The extent of the general response to the code setting was there was a great, great extent of general sense of overarching optimism reinforced the post world war world war two for a period of the unprecedented American act of growing second population. Change good by the way, important policies, important system, real estate spending, spending a like it was a luxury record, cuts of all the CD, at least seven percent on the right and left. The contract virtual US US will cut the most compelling views and shut by study called Latin American Asian Africa. The most recent Arab US exertion in increase involved in 15 years, conflict Middle East and South Asia. The next visit involves the global intense global location like the men more for the 20th century. Here's the player of the Asia, the driving innovation, nationalism, the competition, low generation, sharp liberty, history, identity, and simple pursuit of power, promoting quantum interaction based on the building blocks of harmony under the sustained international engagement. Soft power is under threat, inequality crosses and overwhelms the Trump phenomenon, Lehman 16. Trump arrives to put them in inequality more percentage each rest and increase in income and quality increase over the task of the proportion of the issue of substitute waiting on the satellites of those US China are the only suffering the current political development to make the situation when China's coaches being the suffering of the rebound to the Department of Vietnam or our declines in the United States. It's difficult to optimize the global challenge because it's going to be able to our huge and lack of oil because it's beacon of democracy. Soft powers and impact builds are rival by the current challenge of the US today is to build a coalition of life by the US community capable of transferring a judgment of global process. New global first evidence that HIV needs a blue pill to Somalia and Myanmar are in part of the direction of the acting global global coalition that seems to be unsustainable versus by the just launch of China but cannot put a save or prosperous nation and vanish to the economy. The American middle class has understood this is the backbone of the economy and necessary for sustained growth. Could last 16 middle class wages still fly lending this time period to average three, three, four, five percent of your advances. Great, uh, great in real GDP per person. Close for the whole first world of two per year. They've got two percent of the income per person by increasing in half of what it actually would have been. There's a big difference between two point three point five percent of the median household income at the end of 2015 is always almost exactly where it was at the end of 2000. Every reasonable metric agrees. Madeline of House is needy. Middle class is sharply made to the triple works of Jack of our household jazz and share of income. It's been nearly double in quantity to reach right near record heights. Study after study is good. Come to the solution. Eventually, it's well over the, uh, in, in, into other non union workplaces. The union's increased worker wages is 973 products. The growth of the eight times the annual annual show that the union wage period 10 or 20 percent high. The estimates and underestimates the total impact of the union is all working well. The growth of the union workplace over production of wage the union is 
support high and high economic mobility research by Harvard Economist show that the media was associated with high future rates for children. The youth become the uh, increase in the middle class share of incomes. The hollowing of the middle class and the starting of the middle class. The direct economic growth is correlation the correlation between the decline share of incomes and growing to the middle class and the future price decline percent of the worst in the twenty years in nineteen seventy three. Seven are explained by one third of rising wage and quality years due to poverty. A new contracted wage by approximately twenty one percent. The the union high unionized areas are less likely to live in poverty. The study after study confirms that stronger unions are associated with higher wages, better benefits, stronger middle class, increased economic mobility, and reduced poverty. Slowing growth causes conflict. This is specifically true under Trump, Foster, Paul, Tini. Opposite example of diversion wars are achieved in invasions of policy. One of the five traits around the world leaders use certain types of conflict more like they are to essentially lead them to use military forces, distrustful leaders, exaggerate with their relative aggression, distrustful leaders, so they favor civilly, they favor military actors, 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 they your refill evidence is from 2005 and identifies a litany of threats like HIV, AIDS, disease, climate change, and a variety of other environmental issues. Since it's been 12 years since your impact card was written, why hasn't the United States done anything to resolve those issues? Because the United States had two different presidents that had great soft power. We've read uniqueness evidence that soft power is declining. Also, HIV, AIDS, and climate change are all still problems that- Right, no, my question is, why did soft power, if soft power was high before, and then the economic crisis happened. Why didn't the I don't US think we made a claim that soft power will fix the economy, but we did read an advantage that unions will. Yes, I, I still, I don't think you've answered the question, which is things like HIV, AIDS, avian flu, failed states like Somalia and Myanmar, those problems have worsened, or at least failed states in environmental degradation have worsened, despite well, our, existing our, soft power. That's not true. Uh, our rifle evidence says that the ability of the United States to contain crises like the okay. ability of Somalia to become a multi major interstate war, which did not happen in the 90s, is an example of soft power success to build a coalition of like-minded so, nations. Right, so your impact filter is dependent on the US building a coalition. Where has Trump expressed interest in building a coalition of countries that would address issues like disease or environmental degradation? Well, he withdrew from the Paris Agreement. Well, withdrawing from climate agreements is distinct from cooperating with other nations to stop things like terrorism, which is something that he has definitely expressed. However, Trump isn't the only one in the United States federal government that makes decisions. There are different branches within the government. This includes military and paramilitary officers. It doesn't even necessarily include the United States. Right. The ability to influence other powers, to, to follow the Washington consensus goes beyond- I don't think that's what your card says. But let's uh, go on to your, 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 your job its card. Your, the first couple paragraphs, a couple of sentences of your job its card say, that the contributions of labor unions to the American workplace are many, from compensation, pensions, health care plans, to broadly accepted protective legislation. If this legislation already exists, what additional protection is necessary if that already protects inequality or prevents well, inequality? Those are examples of what labor unions have done. Our advantage is that people aren't in unions, they need to join them. So right. compensation, pensions, but this and is arguing that protective legislation like child labor laws, compensation laws, yeah. and minimum wage laws have already been passed by unions. Well, yeah, like ending child labor has not ended inequality for workplace safety. Right. Uh, but for your, for example, for your Campbell card, what's the threshold for inequality? I don't like, know what the the, the threshold. There's what's no, the threshold for how much inequality we, is worse enough? No, no card in the one you see delineates the GDP per capita. At which point our soft power 
Go so how do I know you have an advantage? Like how? Because you're a logical person, and you, and you know that as inequality rises, soft power declines. And our evidence connects those two as. All right. Last question: Your diversionary war impact that says Trump will lash out. Why would Trump fight a war if, in economic crises, people are critical of additional government spending? They aren't. Uh, foreign wars are seductive, and beating the drums of war is a great way to distract the public. Our evidence is a psychoanalysis of Trump that concludes he's more likely to launch wars in times of job unemployment and inflation. Right. Well, I'm not taking any prep. I'm going to upload it. Or do you want to I'll make a few comments while you upload it. Um. All right. So. I'll keep it brief, that was just reading the app, so not too much to comment on, but I do think that everyone should take note of how good both of these debaters are at spreading. Um, it's not, it, it is an undervalued skill to be able to spread clearly. Things that I really liked about how Ron spoke were that he had emphasis on the tag. He slowed down for both the tag and the card game, made sure that everyone could follow it. He read quickly during the card, but he did not like slur his word. Everything was articulated very well. So. That is very important and undervalued. You all should take time to make sure that you recognize when it's happening and how much easier it is to follow. Um, in cross tag, something I really liked was Alex had really clear priorities. He dove right in. He didn't beat around the bush and get you know start with like, well, let's describe this advantage to me. He had his particular card in mind that he wanted to indict. He spent the first minute digging into it. And at the same time, I think that you saw how Rom did a good job of like kind of dodging parts of that question. He's, main answer to it was that, well, you know, we've seen soft power work in like a situation like Somalia, but that didn't address the like four or five other parts of the card that the negative was asking about how soft power has been used during the last 10 years to address. So good spreading, clear priorities and cross action, a good job by the affirmative to dodge sort of that question without seeming like he had dodged it that much. Uh, the order is two off case. Texas, the United States federal government should lower the corporate tax rate to 15%. The kind of money encourages capital spending to key to fast growth, constable 17. All of the corporations, the value of the new project, the standard corporate tax at 35%, they make investment duty factors, the US more difficult to invest in countries lower price corporate tax rates. Investment spending is vital part of economic growth and investment. Spending is more volatile than consumption. The capital increases wages at 2 to 1 ratio and ironically increases taxes. No solvency deficit, salmon 16. The U.S. has the highest statutory corporate tax rate in the developed world. Many American corporations should incentive to invest overseas and register in the headquarters in low-income tax uh, countries. A larger portion of business income is now earned by passive entities, mainly those firms who forego paying for corporate tax altogether. High tax rates create perverse incentives for investors to keep their money out of the U.S. research debt that those paying harvest by high, uh, high, higher to corporate taxes for our workers through wage suppression, shareholders, both investment, and part of being responded to negatively increasing corporate tax rate. Offshore reduces the effective tax rate to 14 percent. Accountant bolsters revenue and any potential revenue losses offset by the increase in the income tax pursuant to wages. Bishop 16. No country has a corporate tax rate higher than ours are too uh, high. Corporate tax rate is back to the U.S. Treasury. The U.S. corporations are far less than stated, 35% rate to the federal government. Large profit of a profitable U.S. corporation paying an average tax rate of only about 14% corporate tax collections will go up because 50% of a large growth price more than 30 percent is restricted by federal personal. Federal income tax collections will go up. That would offset any loss of corporate tax revenue. Next off. American competitiveness is rebounding confidence 216. And entrepreneurship is rebounding entrepreneurs are driving research and business activity in America. Unions cause offshoring and wrecks competitiveness is Griswold 10. International competition would be damaged to the interest of labor unions. More competition in private markets would mean a greater elasticity of demand for labor. Demand for labor is sensitive to any change in wage controllers competing in global markets. Economy has higher wages and costs. Companies are almost sure because you can choose substitute products, lower costs, beyond non unionized production, direct uh, union demands for a higher wage can lead instead to fewer domestic union jobs. That's been the case in a number of firms in the industry. This is the markets would be around so unions can bargain with management to buy. Competitors decline, bolsters China's rise, war goes nuclear, Freeman 10. The crossing of Chinese wealth coupled with Americans' devaluation of its political and economic position shed light to speculation about China's dispersion of global hedge suppress the, uh, suppress the U.S. Whatever the meaning of Chinese history that will not pursue hegemony, we cannot be certain Chinese history includes some examples of aggressive action blocks ordered in North Korea. I mean, now China's use force and measures toward awareness proven inaccurate. China's modernizing military to rising Chinese, uh, China's defense capabilities to erode American supremacy and resulted in the troubled time American military relations. The U.S. will not abandon its obsession with absolute military superiority. 
Turn that, that turns the case competitive, uh, de uh, declining competitive, wrecks soft power, loss of economic dominance, a terrible for perception of American privacy, and it turns out the e uh, economy, war kills the economy, stops trade, which China will collapse the economy, one of the two largest and most intervent economies, stop trading with each other. And independently, offshoring causes cyber attacks, Mac 12. Considering the undermining effect that offshore has on American IT innovation, offshore undermines the present pool of American IT uh, experts, providing cutting edge raw energy and F technical experience working with the other countries and sense people and to keep protecting American networks and data, Chinese intelligence of our services, recruit those with uh, direct access to corporate efforts to steal sensitive data. Cyber attacks cause extinction for its not. Cyber terror could cause one nuclear state attack, and other provoking nuclear response. This is part of the relevant hair trigger nuclear arsenals can be used to compromise. Attacks have made multi layer attacks to be engineered terrorists because launching US nuclear attack uh, emergencies, communication destruction, maximizing, uh, maximizing destruction claims of responsibility to falsify a hasty military response. That turns the econ cyber attacks discourage innovation since, uh, uh, since companies are afraid of innovation, since Chinese, uh, Chinese intellectual property uh, of rights are weak, and they also crush the economies, ensures that the US uh, 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 competence declines. That also turns software and shows that it crosses that kind of privacy that works instead of up. Case? Uh, the first advantage, here's their 1 and card, uh, their first uh, card, card at all evidence. Unit coverage worsens inequality between women. For female workers, unit coverage concentrated to the top of skill distribution. There is no tension for unit supply and the skill differentials of uh, groups. Units tend to raise inequality between more and less skilled women in three countries, offsetting their effect with uh, group inequality. That turns the case ensures that inequality wor uh, worsens within uh, groups that are already uh, oppressed and uh, only uh, the worsens the worst gap registers. That, uh, they don't fix inequality, thus solve their soft power advantage. And status quo solves their job and evidence says that strong pensions, working conditions have already, won, uh, have already been won by units, which means that they don't need also uh, the, the trash have a uh, uh, high standard for voting on the seven inches. They don't have a specification for how much uh, how much soft power you need to have, which ensures that the counter plan would also uh, sufficient to solve since they don't specify how much their advantage they need to win anyway. And John says that consumption is key to the economy, but the DA link turns this case, uh, link turns this interlink because as companies offshore, they lay off American workers and an unemployed worker is the worst case scenario for the advantage since they have a net income of zero and the middle class is shrinking, but that's due to rising not declining shares of income, worst of all 16. The middle class is shrinking because people are getting too rich for, uh, to be against the middle class. Stephen Rose finds that the upper middle class in the U.S. is larger, richer than it's ever been. All attempts are growing, some are growing faster than others. The larger parts of the uh, population are simply become too rich to consider middle class anymore. Unions will not revive the middle class math or 15. A higher wage bill for the firm will likely be disappointment leads to a productive workers. Author study the world of unions in 17 countries from 1960 to 1996. More than 50% minimum wage workers are young, 25% percent power and workers. The large share is women. Groups of minimum wage workers face a large unemployment reduction due to the minimum wage demand for union membership has experienced a large term decline. For licensing restrictions and financial regulations are other all causes to income inequality. Mirror on 15. Big banks are earned undeserved property because they are protected by a too big to fail policy without majority for regulation. Doctors and lawyers make higher incomes because of their licensing, research, entry competition, scientists, engineering, success, and income because there are anxiety, restriction, high school, immigration, sugar barriers, get rich because of government, and the most important point is diversity war is not unique. Healy for, uh, 428. Trump realized that presidents don't need to go to a pesky Congress every time they want military force. The president can't do the latter pass the task of say the word missile fight when he shall and out ladies for doing so. He can make the wars of the fourth party which seductive with uh, tensions rising. The Korean Peninsula Trump team has signaled maybe ready to unleash another barrage. We make major war. It's nearly as easy as fighting off a tree. Now, various studies have had the president more likely to use force when their approval uh, rate is declining on East Syria. Many at least prove themselves like uh, uh, rally around the flag. Let's get the next card. And inequality. Inequality is declining, uh, Chamber 16. The recent recession hit the wealthy hard. There was a 40% decline in the number. A tax return with at least $1 million in earnings. The inequality declined. There are many all costs in inequality now, which have quick fixes, policy and continue. Education affects uh, wages. A denial of education due to financial difficulties, difference in education play a prominent role. And I think inequality, rapid development, and artificial touch may allow companies to grow about to grow up knowledge base rather than being full time salary for women. 75% of that of men who already hold wealth have the research investment or the leverage to accumulation wealth. Trump has killed soft power 2C16. Official fears of weakening America's non military influence around the world there should improve harder repair protection to block uh, Syrian refugees, supporting the use of water money students, the US citizens getting knocked out of deals, badly hurt America's reputation in the campaign. Trump here will mark the end of American soft power, and Trump will be very concerned with the importance of soft power as a partner of the Democrat in the Senate for foreign, uh, foreign relations. Uh, Joseph Nye acknowledged the poisonous effect of presidential, uh, presidential campaign. Soft power is ineffective since year 14. Russian innovation of Ukraine has punctured the thinking that Washington United States Army can be balanced with, uh, with, with soft power, soft power in no way compensating for military power. There's no convincing evidence to the absent demand for the use of military force. Possessing soft power is distinct from actually using. Using it, Trump's America first platform, you see, will leverage soft power to preserve peace. The uh, Empiric Street withdrawal from the Paris Agreement ensures that he won't prevent environmental degradation. They list uh, Somalia as one example, but there are plenty of other things they can't solve, like disease, that Trump would never engage in international cooperation to solve it. And uh, also, their, their Lehman 16 evidence says that soft power is down, that it's uh, extremely difficult uh, uh, di uh, extremely difficult to reverse, which means that the uh, plan can solve. Trump has already wrecked soft power, so it means that inequality is a small internal leak that, they, uh, that won't reserve it. And civil rights litigation fails, the plan won't solve for 12. Litigation today, uh, outcomes appear on this mission. Give me the extremely difficult time to determine the most of claims. Employment discrimination claims have succeeded only about 25% of the time.
Um, so I want to start with the counter plan. Your uh, Bischoff evidence, the line you highlighted says, by leaving foreign, or foreign earnings overseas indefinitely, U.S. corporations pay far less than 35% rate to the federal government. The actual text of the card is, by leaving foreign or earnings overseas indefinitely, taking advantage of various legal loopholes in our horrifically bloated internal revenue codes, and using every other legal trick in the book, dot, 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 U.S. corporations pay less than the state of 35% rate to the federal government. So A, why would corporations ever offshore if they can still exploit our tax code? And B, how do you get any revenue from corporations if they exploit our tax code when they're onshore? I don't understand the first part of the question. Why would so, they offshore if there are legal loopholes? That they is, won't. That, that is the loophole, that they pass money through offshore entities. Then, then what's the link to the dissent? If corporations will never offshore because they can get all their profits by exploiting the tax code, why would a union matter to their profits? The DA, so the argument in the counter plan is that corporations do, uh, they do assume that they'll pay the full 35% tax rate when they're making no, their profits. No, this, this evidence says that they don't, and they aren't. The first part of the DA, all major U.S. corporations evaluate new projects assume that they will pay the standard corporate tax rate of 35%. Whether they actually well, pay this rate or not, they make that assumption. Then, then counter plan, counter plan, solvency still assumes that you get some revenue from these companies. If you don't change the tax code, how do you get revenue from them? They, Okay, there's two arguments. One is the argument that we bring corporations back. The right. second argument is that it forces them okay. to pay a 15% yeah. rate rather than um, something else. So else. the uniqueness for the disadvantage suggests that uh, you just, the one line says that we have some resurgence in entrepreneurship, but your impact evidence says China's manipulating the currency, they have more people, they have more money, they have more tech. If this is the case, how could the rise in American entrepreneurship possibly outstrip China's rise? Okay, so you listed a couple of things that China is doing, but that is not directly impacts entrepreneurship. For example, it says they're building defensive capabilities in the SES. That does not affect directly. No, I didn't, I didn't talk about the SES. I said currency manipulation, they have more people, more money, and more technology. Right, but that's what the car says. For instance, the car, the technology you're talking about is like, uh, some missile system? No, it's some like IT templates. I cut the card. It's okay. <laughs> it says rising Chinese defense capabilities for American surprise. So your CSER evidence that answers the theory of soft power from 2014 says that soft power failed to stop Russia from annexing Crimea. Our impact was about getting like-minded countries to cooperate. Is your contention that Russia is a like-minded country with the United States? I don't, your argument is that we make these nations like money, that they no, cooperate with it, us that what, they want So this is, this is what you think the CSER evidence is, not our advantage. No, okay. the argument um, is that other countries will not cooperate it's with us regardless of something. Is it conditional? Yeah. All right. Uh, perfect. <laughs> All right, so both sides have staked out their positions. Now is when the challenging decisions come into play. So first I'll highlight some things that I really like from both the speech and the cross X, and then I'm gonna pose some questions that I think you all should start thinking about. Uh, once again, a very uh, competent speaker, and everyone should notice this. You should record yourself and think whether you sound exactly like these two debaters, and if you don't, you should strive to get there, and until you are, you should be doing speaking posts. Um, Things that I really like from the NC. I think I had the privilege to judge Alex a lot this year. One of the things he is best at is knowing when to stop an argument. Like knowing when he has made an argument enough that he can move on to the next one. It is neither too short, such that it is blippy and unwarranted, nor is it too long that he is wasting time. So a couple examples of this would be in the negative case. While he's going through the dis ad, the turns case arguments were, this is exactly what your turns case arguments should look like. They were two very efficient and intelligent sentences explaining the dynamic and connecting the cards from the negative case to the affirmative case. These are very valuable arguments. They make it so that in the next speech, he can extend them. Like if he wins individual cards from the dis ad, he can do massive damage on the affirmative case. Again, on the affirmative case, I counted like 17 or 18 independent arguments on the affirmative case and maybe eight to 10 cards. It's a lot. You all should be striving to make this many arguments in all of your rounds. And the trick to it is knowing when you have finished an argument. So keep looking at that as they go on. In cross sex, once again, we had a really good example of starting with a particular card and, and digging hard into it. Not just like, you seem to have miscut this card, can you explain it? But like reading the part of the card and saying, how can you explain this discrepancy? Um, and again, we saw a very good job of sort of sidestepping that question. Like no one, it didn't seem like Rom had really taken out that piece of evidence by the end of the questioning, and that's because Alex did a very good job of sort of 
spinning what I think was a good question and giving a pretty solid answer to it. So what I want you to think about with the, while Ron finishes up his prep is there is pretty much no way Ron can go line by line down the entirety of the AC, down the entirety of the counter plan, and down the entirety of the dis hat. He's going to have to make choices both in terms of what strategic concessions he's going to make, which arguments he's going to group together, and which arguments he's, you know, what are the priorities of the speech? So I want you to look at the flow and think, what are the three most important arguments that you need to address in the 1AR, or that Ron needs to address in the 1AR? And I often think of debate in terms of voting issues. Like, what is the round coming down to right now? How, where is the, dis the ballot going to be written? So think about that. I want you to just take some time to think about that, and you'll see what Ron thinks about it in a few minutes. So. And take your time. They should. They can have some time to think about it. If you're not ready. I'm, I'm good. Uh, the orders: the economy advantage, the equality advantage, the counter plan. Advantage. Economy and equality. Where? Uh, counter plan. by the recession, but there's a rise in GDP share for the large top 1%. The person middle income middle income groups, there's are not too many alt causes. That's uniqueness for the affirmative workers benefit that and over or benefits of unions over, overwhelm that by creating workers' benefits that outweigh create education, etc. The truck doesn't kill stock car, the affirmative can rebound from that. That was the unique evidence right of the one you see. Also, it signals that the government isn't decided by 45, which overwhelms the truck phenomenon. The the soft power fails argument is not about uh, is about cooperating with non-like-minded nations, not about like-minded nations, which is the thesis are uh, about our advantage, which also answers your next argument. Litigation does work due to compensations, and it has a deterrent effect that their evidence doesn't assume. So the 25% failed rate does not apply to a future without those deterrent effects. The, the other advantage, the unions don't hurt women. That are, the unions hurting women is a bit unskilled and skilled women, which is not a class of people, which is the critical internal link to our advantage. Group the next year argument. They assume union membership is high now to provide the benefits, which is not true. Since many workers are not currently unionized, rising wages are for the upper middle class, not the middle class itself, which is the critical internal Link. The next two arguments about unions not key does not assume mobility that allows people to move out of low income jobs and a pull up effect. All their evidence assumes these are all low wage workers, which is not true. And you should prefer evidence that cites net consensus among Harvard professors. The alt causes are uniqueness for the app that our evidence says unions can overwhelm the uniqueness arguments, but Syria proves the theory of diversionary is true, a war is true, and that Trump will only, only make it worse in the future. It turns to disadvantage because a war with the United States would undermine our ability to cooperate with China and destroys the U.S. competitiveness since our economy is now in the gutter. The the, the counterpoint. Permutation to vote that shields the link. The middle class needs jobs and income to grow. Capital investment isn't supportive of our research and benefits are not pa passed on to shield voters, not workers. Blair, 17, the policy going to benefit the middle class. I'll put the money job and do a second of a credit. Progressively reduce the income. Counting these below the employment of the economy. Dimension below to absorb hours of American work. I want to offer the corporate tax at least a vision way to boost economy. Major occupation for pay rates are because that's your shareholders are overwhelming the relevant. You are much more likely to save the theoretical chain link in corporate tax. Large revenues, valid raise, and real evidence are even linked to the theoretical well. Don't let the safety club save the class. Have to have interest like those in the well. Like the people over the future corporate taxes. One boosting back the credit. A corporate income tax is assumed to be a large form of capital owners. Capital income is concentrated. The top one percent holding fifty percent of the head is required to do growth. Having trickle down capital flight and offshore is a mid Samuel sixteen. Lowering the corporate tax they won't take it uh, too late. It may make any difference. They're probably whether they think it's shaped to choose it. And workers rose from the rich man acting capital. Lowering the tax increase to the bottom, which countries uh, compete to lower tax rates. You would like it would see a dramatic lower, dramatically lower revenue. U.S. economies or revenue uh, as well as companies do it. And it's one of the best loose revenues. U.S. companies do it only against one of the revenues. Companies choose to spend high taxes. Companies look at operations. U.S. U.S. is set to a favorable regulatory regulatory routine. Condition now. 
Shining is a bending issue, which excuse one AR flexibility, which is the arc of flash. Death is key to debates. Both provided they remove the spells of logical policy after late development debates. <gasps> Vote after deterrence. The competitive is CA. Competitive mess is dead. Decrease over 16 debates. It's all short of critical measures. You said you were hard for this. You'll find the evasion of the offset of the corporate tax. So the education team is sharp to political systems. How good the Trump's plans are not clear enough to be a bad tax. So the global tax structure works around it. Unions aren't a threat to competition. Carrier 90 even if the unionization is advantage of more because they're deformed producers. The U.S. made competitive carrier unionization rate rate. Even some of the studies can fail to face the U.S. imperialism. The competitiveness making the liberal unions for trade policy effects of unions are remotely demanding the practice. Will evidence not support this view? The impact unions have on the trade policy overall international wage differential. Unions are small, they're rising. Percentage imports increase imports. Accelerated industrial restructuring. The attraction not only motivated extensively as the U.S. and many U.S. industries. IT went offshore because of Chinese censorship laws. Big staying in Silicon Valley much more attractive. No cyber war. All the constant seniors. Little chance the best ever should go to war with the modern cyber world. Warfare is describing the attack threat. The college digital cyber attack threat. The CBS terms warns the language of the language of the global global population. Our social media is the good work in this people prove the government subject not now cyber attacks until after they've been passed. Public field needs to need to go to war. The U.S. China working for thirty U.S. and Chinese nations are unlikely to lead the war. The U.S. China waiting to operate today. Global high level Australian Fed. The U.S. Department of Defense Department of Defense. Economic Study Center. The Washington Bureau of Asian Studies. The principal enemy of the U.S. Review. The U.S. Report. Trade Partners. The Free Trade Rivalry. The U.S. Military. Under the restraint. Rivalry. The lack of preparation for major war. Country country major conflict leaders and bureaucracy in both countries. Less incentive to show the price of the tweets. These unwarranted unwarranted escalation. Market escalation. Trade isn't key to middle class growth. China isn't key to middle class growth. So China wars and turn the case and it won't cut trade because trade prevents war. Soft power isn't based on GDP share but perceived values. Canada has high soft power but no economic market share. really good. That should be pretty obvious from that speech. He had a very efficient covering of the affirmative case. Um, finish it on my clock with an, a minute and 30 seconds. I want to highlight the order that he went. Instead of going counter plan, dis ad, and then ending with the affirmative case, the priority here is to get your offense into the 1AR. And to do that, he needs to win the affirmative advantages, or at least parts of the affirmative advantages. So he starts with the affirmative case and knows if he had done it in the reverse order, started by reading all of these cards, who knows if he would have missed crucial analytics or extensions on the affirmative case that generate the offense he needs to win the round. Um, a couple other arguments I want you to highlight is there's a lot of cards saying opposite things in this round, and what we're starting to see, and what I think we're gonna see more of in the next two speeches, is some evidence comparison. So one of the most important arguments and arguments that you should include in your 1AR is, is arguments about why we should prefer the affirmative evidence on certain questions. So that came up when Rom mentioned that we should prefer evidence based on statistical consensus or consensus among experts in the field. So he's saying that even if there's three or four cards that he's not directly indicting by Alex, he's presented a tiebreaker as to why his evidence would be a better piece of evidence It concludes based on the dynamics of both pieces of evidence that one side is stronger. Um, so again, I think the same, in terms of being an active watcher of this round, you should switch boats and think, what is Alex gonna do now? What, what were the key concessions from that last speech? So you should think, what are the two or three, look through your flow, and actually like write down, or like take a stake, and what are the two or three arguments that were the most important concessions or the most important opportunities for Alex to take advantage of in his next speech? Um, the other, a couple other things, one thing I didn't get to from there that I forgot to mention, very, you always need to do this, but I will point it out, ask the status of a counter plan. So, Ron did it, that's important. He was able to throw in conditionality into this round. I think uh, that's a high, it's a very strategic argument to put in the round, and we can discuss whether we want to see this in your practice rounds, but conditionality is a voting issue. In, in a matter of 15 seconds, Ron was able to make a voting issue in the middle of the, the CP flow. So that is a very efficient and effective argument to be putting into this speech. I will leave it, we'll discuss later whether that's something that we want to see in your practice rounds. But it is worth noting, obviously that is the kind of argument that Alex must respond to in his next speech. So I'm gonna give you some silent time to think through what are the three opportunities that Alex must be taking advantage of in this next speech. And what are the three opportunities that Rom has set up for himself that Alex must be addressing in, the, in this next speech? Yeah, feel free to talk to each other about this. Like, they're, they've debated in front of big crowds. They can handle y'all mumbling to each other.
raise your hand. High. Raise your hand high. Can my lab raise their hand too? What's the order on case? Uh, inequality econ. So that's the soft power impact and the diversion. Alright. Right? The counterpoint solves the entirety of the case. It increases wages for uh, people because it brings companies back to the United States, which solves their inequality advantage, solves their econ growth advantage, ensures that corporations return to the United States, which expand, ex expands the tax base, ensures that it increases innovation, and they can see the sufficient spirit in the absence. You can't quantify how much inequality is produced by the app, you should assume that the counterpoint solves. Uh, now they say, perfectly both of that still wastes into benefits. Since the uh, sister still massively increases wages, that means it overcomes the effect of the counterpoint. And still, uh, either way, the counterpoint still links less than the benefit in the app. They say middle class means jobs. One, uh, one thing you can see in our, our Bishop evidence that says that capital investment is more volatile than consumption, which means that our, our, our link to the DAI waste because uh, uh, because consumption is very sticky and it requires time, which means that the DAI waste are time for a second. Middle class is already growing in wages. They can see that, uh, that, that the stretching of the middle class is due to the upper quadrant of, of, quadrant of the middle class increasing wages rather than bottom, uh, bottom dropping up. They say offshore is a myth. One, uh, one there's heavy evidence. It's only about specific part, types of companies that require a uh, particular type of labor force, like uh, companies in Silicon Valley, but this can apply to a massive type of uh, variety of uh, companies that are manufacturing, automotive manufacturing, that can really be brought second. Uh, second and prefer a salmon evidence that says identify this pure example of how companies moving abroad because they've identified the corporate tax rate is too high for their project to ensure that uh, we have some pure evidence. They say uh, they say condo one counter termination the decade gets to read one conditional uh, one conditional counter plan asking to rest shooting rest across the AD act as current sort of funding conditional IP staff for their less desire my FC low multiple currency they get all the shooting flexibility need the applicants to pick the plan whereas the neck is forced to respond they can pick advantages and the best evidence to that we should flexibility see the neck needs multiple tracks in the app they read have infinite prep time and a plan out there one AM lost region the neck needs the ability to uh, switch in the short hour they say apps uh, app flexibility one turn less conditional obviously these negatives for disaster team violation which is edible uh, which means it's worse uh, and it's offense and I can win anyway second it's not bad strategy use for example rating impact turns and link defense is the uh, same thing your strategy but you're defending to answer that anyway you say uh, you say labor and debate that's edible the deck has to kick something anyway now uh, either way reject the argument not the team now on the DA the DA on ways in terms of case A, uh, for, first is uh, time frame uh, They conceded that, the, uh, that that consumption is uh, consumption shifts very slowly, which means that the uh, app takes a lot of time. Even if you give uh, workers more money, that consumption of the economy doesn't. It can result in fast growth, but capital investment does, which means that the, uh, the, the, the uh, DA outweighs, uh, outweighs the case. Second, uh, second is in terms of case they uh, extend, extend that uh, the economic decline turns soft power, which ensures uh, that because the United States no longer perceived as their sovereign, maybe not a uh, it's not a direct measure of proportional GDP, but it is proportional to our economic privacy. 
privacy, uh, their economic privacy argument there. Reef evidence identifies that the U.S. is a primate, uh, pri pri primary player in the international arena because of our political and economic prestige, which means that GDP obviously matters. Also turns, uh, also it turns their uh, economic uh, economic argument because uh, because China war causes a loss of trade, which ensures that the uh, entire uh, global economy collapses. They say it doesn't affect the middle class, but obviously trade affects everybody in the economy since if we lack a uh, trading uh, products, uh, China that collapses some major part of our uh, carbon uh, trade economy. They say competition is dead. One, the competition is growing strongly now. That's our confidence. This is a, a survey of multiple industry leaders, which means uh, it's a uh, more recent and snapshot of status quo. Second, they uh, you should read their uh, price you have to cross for evidence. It says that the tax code is a major reason why competitiveness is declining, which means it goes negative capital and results. They say they this is not a threat to competition. One, this uh, uh, this, this is. Uh, Yes, it is extended or Griswold evidence that says it crushes wage and ensures that there's a lack of elasticity in the economy uh, because uh, because uh, corporations lack the ability to invest money back uh, back in the economy. The, able, uh, uh, the framing issue is uh, the time frame question. They say uh, they say no offshore in Silicon Valley. That was the answer about that's a tiny section of corporations. They say cyber attack. Uh, they say no cyber attack extended or backline evidence. They causes this calculation. Even if it's not intentional that the U.S. goes to war, the uh, a war could uh, break the current nuclear codes and ensure that we launch uh, weapons against uh, China, which causes a uh, uh, miscalculation. They say no China war one that miscalculation. The answer above, even if turn solves it, conventionally, it's so miscalculation, which turns that uh, cause me to go to war intentionally. Second, it's inevitable China, the U.S. will pursue hegemony because it's bound to that identity, which that, that, that was our, uh, that was the one of the evidence, which ensures that even if the uh, tensions now are good, China, as China rises, that will go to war. They say trade's not key to middle class. That was the answer above. They say top power is not key to GDP. That's the answer above. Case. Okay. A lot of dropped all causes. He can dismiss this as just as unique as questions. But first, on the uh, first starting on the inequality event, to the extent that licensing all causes uh, and right, linear all causes are key, 428. Uh, that. Uh not sure what card that is, but there's a variety of all causes such as banking regulations, licensing regulations, and there's reasons why scientists and engineers continue to make inequality. That's the reason why the middle class is being stretched out, which ensures that the unions cannot solve because there's a regulation that the app does not change, even if they improve uh, improve the, the wages for uh, certain unions. That does not affect doctors, lawyers, scientists, or engineers that are not uh, not, not, not unit paid uh, unit paid labor, which ensures that they, uh, they don't solve that. Uh, it, it decreases the currency advantage. Next on, there's soft power impact. Extend that to, uh, they drop that even if we possess soft power, that's different from Trump leveraging. They conceded that the Paris Agreement uh, proves uh, that Trump will not leverage soft power effectively to cooperate with like minded nations, even if uh, the, their argument assumes that they're like minded nations who want to cooperate with them. They also drop that Trump kills soft power because other countries perceive us as a rogue actor at the international arena, which means that there is not an alliance that we can cooperate with. Now, uh, on the econ advantage, uh, extend, extend, that the, extend the argument that says. Uh, Extend the argument that says women equality increases that and the widest gap between skilled and higher skilled women ensures that they widen equality act that just creates about perception uh, perception to be uh, of our strength economic stage and uh, extend the link turn of their economy advantage, which says the D link to the DA turns the case. Their job evidence assumes that consumption drives the economy, but if uh, if wages increase, the, the corporations can no longer afford to pay their workers as much as so they have to lay off some workers, which turns the case, since the worst case for their scenario is a worker who has no money because he can't uh, consume any products. So the first thing you should be doing right now is thinking what, given the priorities that you outlined, that you thought Alex needed to go for, what did he go for, and do you agree with the, the difference between those if there is some? Um, you should always be active like that. Don't just assume that Alex had the best game plan. Uh, think through whether you know what would be the advantages of the plan that you thought out, or the priorities that you thought out. I'm sure Alex has things that he thinks he could have done differently or better in that speech. And you should be thinking along those lines too. Something that I thought he did really well, um, again, the order of the speech was really smart. You start with your offense, start with the counter plan, which solves a lot of the case. Address the perm, then go to the dishead, which is the main offense that he's going for in this speech. Um, in doing that, he's getting his offense out there. The thing that he didn't necessarily have enough time for was addressing the inequality advantage in the affirmative case. But he has layers of offense above that. He's already established a turns case argument from the disad. He has multiple weighing arguments that address it. And he does establish a few points of defensive arguments that would be used on that flow. So the priorities of the speech were, were reflected in the order of the speech. And even within a flow, his priorities were really clear. So a lot of times people would just go to a flow and go top down. Alex was better than that. He started it by doing sort of a big picture extension of the, for example, counterplan or disadvantage by explaining what's the story of the argument. 
And instead of just referring to card names and making the same tags over and over again, he's telling, he's explaining it. He's going link by link, what happens? What happens when we have more unions? Where do the wages go? And starts with that, then he goes through the line by line and then does some big picture way. So the framing issue, for example, on the disad is this time frame argument. That's a very critical argument. That's sort of what that's what differentiates like good debaters from great debaters is not just going through the line by line, but giving us some sort of framing to understand when the line by line is close, which, which way does the tie go? Um, so there's a few other arguments that on the flow that operate in a similar vein, and I think that you should be looking for those both when you're flowing the 2 and R and listening for them in the 2 AR. Finally, I think so. I think the staff is going to have a lot of different opinions about whether theory arguments like this should be in the 1AR, but this is a pretty good example that shows the value of a theory argument like the one Ron presented in the 1AR and why they proliferate, and so why you need to be able to beat them. Ron made an argument in 15 seconds, and it took Alex 45 seconds to answer. He stole back some of the time advantage that the negative has in that process. I would be very surprised if Ron goes for the argument in the 2AR, given what the 2N did, but he already got a victory by making that 15 second argument and forcing the 2N to cover it because they risk losing if they don't. So again, there's a lot of different opinions of it, but you can't deny that it was an effective strategy. It gave the negative or the affirmative a strategic advantage, which is why you need to be able to beat it because people are going to do it against you. Um, yeah, so same thing as last time. What does the affirmative need to go for in this next speech? And take a stake in it. Don't just kind of like brainstorm. Think like, write down two or three things or circle three areas on the flow. This is where Rom absolutely needs to go, or this is where I would go if I was in Rom's shoes. Uh, you're just the econ advantage, the inequality advantage, the capital advantage. Uh, Trump is unstable and irrational. A foster evidence says a small change would result in an immediate catastrophe. It took a century to humiliate the CCP. It will take even longer for a successful rise between the length of our or length of their impact and the speed of ours should lead you to vote affirmative to the multiple barriers that would intervene before their impact happens. Their first argument is that they would create a divide between skilled and unskilled workers. Our impact is about a class of people, not about the divide between the skilled workers. So this internal link doesn't apply. He also didn't answer this in the seminar, so you shouldn't be able to do any work for him. The next argument is that they, 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 they would lay off workers. Our evidence compares the two effects. The pull-up effect on wages and the effect on corporations to lay off and says that the effect on wages outstrips the others. They concede you should prefer our evidence because of the consensus the professor cited and that it results in economic mobility to move workers to more secure positions. The inequality advantage, we're not going for it. However, we will concede their alt causes. If the United States economy is inevitably so unequal and our stock power is inevitably so screwed by Trump, that means that China will inevitably rise because we can never compete with them and it bolsters all of our alt causes arguments against the disadvantage. The counter plan proper permutation do both. It shields the link cross apply their sufficiency framing argument. If this counter plan or the permutation sufficiently shields the net benefit, links less doesn't matter because it still prevents the industry from offshoring. Their solvency thesis is that a 1% shift from a 14% tax rate to 15% is sufficient to bring companies back to the United States. If that's the case, if 1% is the link sensitivity, that either means all our alt costs to destroy this, to this net benefit or that the permutation sufficiently seals it. You can also cross apply the DeChristopher evidence we run on the DA that substantiates the Necessity of a large or of, of the necessity of a huge tax change. This also affects their link magnitude arguments because the, the link has to be large enough to change this, but the union's hit is not large enough as substantiated by their evidence. Now, they don't solve wages because the vast majority of that's uh, two, one AR2 is they don't solve wages because the vast majority of it is tied to the upper class. They have 40, they, they keep 1% keeps 45% of profits and they're likely to save it, not spend it, so it doesn't increase aggregate demand. They well, one AR3, they don't solve the increase to onshoring because the companies have huge incentives to stay now. They are currently here and there's access to capital and educated workforce, et cetera, so they would never leave. This is also defense to the DA. The threshold to, for a company to leave the United States is so large that a union is insufficient to do it, especially if the permutation shields it. And that one Griswold card in the 1NC is not good enough to reach that threshold, especially since their counterplan evidence does impact D4. As the dissed proper at the top, consumption may be slower, but both our internal links are relatively slow. You should care about the speed of the impact more since that's what's going to matter since the internal links are tied. The trade, the, the economy, the 
Your war doesn't turn trade, it's the other way around because <gasps> trade interdependence prevents wars, not backwards. That was the heat that was in the one yard. No cyber war, their evidence is state. They assume we can attribute the war to China, which is impossible since we don't have that technology and mutually deter destruction checks. The no China war miscalculation is unlikely. No one slips and hits a button. We still care about deterrence and interdependence, and our evidence cites accents like the EP3 crisis and the Hainan incident that says war is incredibly unlikely. Leaders have time to make decisions. Pursuit of hegemony inevitable means their impact is inevitable as well, and does not mean conflict since we can use non military measures to prevent a conflict. this more. Um, so once again, I think that looking around the room, people were varying levels of intensity with flowing. I should have looked up earlier and noticed this, but I really recommend like y'all weren't flowing like you were debating this round. And that's how you should be when you're watching a debate. Flow like you're the one that's about to stand up and give the speech. If you don't put it like if you're not in that mindset, you are a passive watcher. And same with a judge. Like if you're a judge about to give a decision in finals of the TOC, you're gonna be flowing like your reputation depends on it. And you guys should have that same, the only way you will understand what it's like to be a judge is to put yourself in that in that position. Um, so a couple things that Rom did that were really awesome. Some strategic concessions. So I didn't see those coming. I thought that those were very, very strategic moves to, uh, to both concede the alt cause argument on the affirmative case, which affects the dis ad, in addition to the sufficiency framing. That those were great moves that ended up collapsing huge parts of the flow. Um, and there were things that Alex probably could have preempted or seen sort of like he put himself in front of that argument so that the affirmative isn't the only person that gets the spin on those sort of arguments. He didn't go for them in the 2 way, and it gives the affirmative the opportunity in the 2 way to control the framing on those critical sort of weighing issues. Um, finally, I think again, the order was, was really solid. And sometimes the fundamentals are the things that's most important to highlight. Both of these debaters were excellent speakers. Both of them had a very, did a very good job of ordering the speech. Start with your offense. Establish the story of the offense. Beat the strongest defense to that argument. Establish clear weighing for those arguments. Then go to the negative key offense. Go through it in terms of order of priority. Both these debaters had priorities for their speeches and it reflected in their speeches. Um, one comment I will make though is that this round or this style of debate would only work in front of a very good judge and you will not always have that, that caliber of judge. The reason I say that is that there weren't a lot of points in time where they slowed down and said, all right, here's how it all breaks down, right? Like these are in a slow voice, like this sort of pace. Um, and yeah, you should do that because if your judge isn't keeping up 100% of the time, which to be very honest, most of them aren't, uh, you need to sometimes like couple the line by line, this sort of line by line detail and sophisticated analysis, which is like simplification and it's some slow down big picture analysis. So I would say that in terms of accommodating to the average judge, that is the, the area of improvement that I would most suggest for, for these debaters. Um, but overall, I mean, it was obviously an extremely like high quality round. The arguments across the board were extremely good. Both were making very good strategic decisions. I'd be shocked if the everyone in here made like one had a one-sided decision. Um, so again, like I mentioned at the beginning of the round, put yourself in the judge's shoes. Don't just think like, oh, this is a casual decision, like it doesn't really matter. Imagine you're about to announce this decision to both of these, these students' coaches that you're gonna be in front of a room of 100 people explaining your decision. They're gonna grill you if you get it wrong. Think like that, and that'll give you a much better sense of who you're judging and who you're debating in front of. Um, but yeah, let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> Any questions or comments from other people? Or? Uh, so what we'd like you to do is uh, put, your, put yourself in the shoes of a judge who has just judged this debate. Uh, take some time to think about who you would vote for if this was an actual debate. Um, write out an RFD as if you're about to deliver it to the debater, so it should be very thorough. It should consider all the arguments that are on the flow. It should be very detailed as if this is a real legitimate route. So take some time to consider the arguments on both sides. Uh, look at your flow very carefully. Pretend this is like five minutes of the TOC. Your state for making decisions. So you obviously have to be very thorough. Um, Come up with an RFD. You should be able to, you know, give a full, complete RFD. Um, we will be putting out a Google form um, to, to, you know, get your responses. 
um, where you should you know, write down who you voted for, uh, as well as the RFD uh, for the side you voted for. Uh, we'll write the Google Form link on the board in a second. URL slash SJDI dash Arjun, you still need a recording? <laughs> 